Hello, everyone. How you guys doing? So I learned last night that um, don't stay up at 1 o'clock in the morning drinking a beer called Golden Monkey, which is a, <laughs> which is a 22 ounce Philadelphia beer with 9% alcohol content. So um, I learned that last night. Um, now, in all seriousness, um, this has been fantastic. I think having the opportunity to network with everyone here, um, learning some of the great work that you guys are doing and what Monetate is doing for a, a lot of the brains here has been fantastic. So what I'm going to talk to you guys about today is about personalization and some of the work that we're doing from a Verizon wireless standpoint um, and how the customers that we're dealing with today really drives the personalization, right? So it drives what we are doing. It makes it challenging because they, they provide a lot of information that we have no idea what to do with it. Um, so I like to take it back home and think about it from a personal standpoint. When I was uh, a young boy growing up in West Africa, Liberia, um, he was a soccer fan. And you know, I didn't have a lot of choices. Right, so when it, when it came down to me trying to play soccer, all I needed was a soccer ball and an open field, right? And I'm 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 happy, and I'm out in the field and I'm playing with my friends and and and, and so forth and so on. But today, you know, I have a lot of choices from you know what type of soccer cleats I want to wear, who I want to buy from, um, the color of the cleats, and so forth and so on. And I look at my daughter who's two years old, and it's a, it amazed me how she engages with you know, a, a mobile device, right? So when she wants to watch her favorite show on a tablet, she knows exactly where to go. When she's on the mobile phone, she knows exactly where to go, right? So it's about that consistency across the board. So that in itself, you know, it, 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 it drives the demand on how do we meet our customer needs. So what I'm going to talk about is basically give you an overview of what personalization is. Why does it matter? Some of the challenges that we're facing from a personalization standpoint, a lot of you have heard that today, right? Um, and then how we approach is that Verizon. Um, a lot of the Verizon team and audience, um, it's not an easy task. Um, and I'm going to show you some use cases. So what does personalization mean, right? So we all know it's about delivering the right content for the right person at the right time. Yeah, it sounds easy, right? Someone wants something, you give it to them. How hard can that be? But the problem with that is, you know, customers are giving us a lot of information. So how do we unclutter that information, right? Personalization is not just simply doing A-B testing. So I remember back in the day when we wanted to do a landing page test. You know, we engaged with IT, built the pages, right? Ticks one month, whatever it is, run the test, and then we found that it was a waste of time, right? Complete waste of time that we should have just stuck with what we were doing. And sometimes it works, right? Or we use personalization today for UI fixes. So there's a problem with the website that we can't get IT to change it. Eh, let's just use some of the tools that we have at our disposal to fix it, right? So that in itself is not personalization. Consumers are very, very demanding, right? They want to be accommodated. They have every right to, right? Why do you buy from your favorite brand? It's because you have value that they meet, right? So it could be price. It could be the quality of the product. It could be convenience, right? They have choices. They can easily find a substitute for your product, right? Someone mentioned yesterday, I think it was Peter Shankman, that you have 2.7 seconds to engage with the consumer. 2.7 seconds. Think about that for a second. You have 2.7 seconds to sell someone on your products. If they, if, if they met you for the very, very first time. So it's challenging. You know, what are some of the benefits or if, you know, really leveraging personalization is the demand that the customer, uh, uh, that they want, right? 
better customer experience, because if you don't provide that customer experience, they can easily go to the competition, right? And if you provide better customer experience, it's going to help improve your conversion rate. You know, this is a study that Monetate and, and e-consultancy ran that shows, on average, you know, if you have a better customer experience, it helps you improve your conversion rate. I mean, there's a lot of different objectives from a personalization standpoint that it drives. Brand perception is your first impression, right? 2.7 seconds. If someone is engaging with you for the first time, you want to improve that experience. We're seeing it everywhere, right? So recently I went to Amazon and I was looking for soccer cliques and I left. I was just researching because I haven't, I haven't purchased a cliques in a while. You know, my, my weekend's activities is soccer on, on Sundays. So when I'm in the office on Monday, I realize that if you're over 30, don't hate me for this, that. I'm getting older and older and older and older because I can't walk anymore. Uh, <laughs> my knees are hurting. So actually, I tried dancing last night, and I realized I shouldn't be doing that anymore. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm getting old, right? A 32-year-old guy said he's getting old. It's sad. Um, but personalization is everywhere. Right? It, it provides you the information that you need at the right time. I was on my way to New Jersey, and there was a traffic ahead, and I was using my Google, my Google Now. And it popped up, and it said, hey, there's an alternate route. It will save you 10 minutes on your trip if you take this route versus keep going this way. Right? And it did save me some time. But it's not the easiest thing to do. There's a lot of data that are being provided to us from the customers. So we have to figure out how to put all that data in one place, unclutter that data. Pradeep spoke about the company culture. So if you're in a large organization, you know how hard it is to move a needle, right? You might not have the technology to go about it. You might not have the skill set to go about it. So these are all the barriers from a personalization and a real-time marketing perspective. So it's important for you to understand what your customer wants. So with all these challenges, how do we approach it at Verizon Wireless? First, we have to understand our customers. <laughs> and understanding a Verizon customer is not an easy thing, right? Because a Verizon customer is all over the place, right? It can be someone who's a techie, right? It could be a comparison shopper. Um, it could be someone who's innovator. So how do you understand all these different data segments for a brand like Verizon Wireless? So what we did, we partnered with Monetate to sort of help us understand the customer, serve the customer, provide the experience that they're looking for, being able to deliver content in real time, and Monetate in itself doesn't solve that problem, right? But what Monetate enabled us to do is to, is to leverage all the other assets that we have. So BlueKai, for example, is our data management platform. And Monetate integrates with BlueKai, so it enabled us to unclutter all the data that we have, plug it into Monetate, and help us serve up the experience. The most important data assets that you have is your first party data, right? So Monetary enabled, enabled us to do that as well. Um, and most important, you, you know, your company culture, your agencies. Um, you have to work with, you know, a lot of different parties. So some of the challenges you heard in, in the previous slide is a lack of knowledge, lack of tools, and so forth and so on. So you have to rely on an expert to help you. So initially when we started, we focused on the high volume and high value segments, right? So we want to get big ones. You know, we, we want to show something that's, you know, is, is, is going to drive the biggest results. But you learn that it's okay to start simple. You know, you can simply start a campaign, build some early wins, and build your confidence that you know what you're doing, and you can move up to the next stage. So we looked at it in three phases, right? So phase one is all about being simple. So you can use 
new and returning customer, or you can simply do you know, geo-targeting or device targeting and so forth and so on, right? So you build some early wins there. And then the second phase is where you start focusing on your key marketing segments, you know, product affinity. So someone likes an iPhone or they're browsing on, a, on an Android device and so forth and so on to build campaigns. So now that you've done phase one and phase two, now, you know, you're a pro at it. So it's almost like you're in college in phase one. And then in phase two, you're sort of getting your MBA. And in phase three, you have your PhD, right? So now you're the PhD expert from a, from a personalization standpoint. So this is an example of a phase one campaign where you're just looking at, you know, a customer who, who are in certain geolocations that maybe service is not so great and you're trying to help them purchase a jetpack to help improve their performance. So it's a simple test, just looking at geolocation for new returning customers, right? So you can hit your target from a high volume standpoint as well here. And then, so once you built some learnings from phase one, then you can move to phase two. So you start looking at your marketing channels. You start looking at the device the person is browsing on. You start looking at the product affinity. So if someone is spending a lot of time with an iPhone, for example, on your website, you, know, you can start looking at that segment and say, well, someone is coming from pay search, for example. They're more than likely to engage with an iPhone device, or they came from this offer. They're more than likely to engage with this offer. So you start combining segments one and segment two. So here's an example where we wanted to test someone who came from Ebates for the affiliate channel. And pretty simple test. So you can see an example here, we wanted people who are coming from Ebates to, f to feel that the experience was built for them. So the offer is unique to Ebates. The experience is consistent across the site. So whatever you saw in Ebates in terms of the offer, if you get 50% of a device, if you came to the landing page, it's right there. If you go throughout the entire experience of the website, it's right there. If you go through the shopping cart, the promo code that you're using is right there. So the experience is very consistent across the board. Right? So this is an example of phase two. Another example here is the Galaxy Gear. So we're looking at pushing the Galaxy Gear. So if you spent a lot of time looking at the Galaxy Note 2 or the Galaxy Note 3, and you've also looked at the Galaxy Gear, but you haven't purchased it. So we can customize your experience where we know that you've shown some interest and we would like to push it. So very simple. Again, the whole concept here is keeping it simple, right? So nothing too complicated. You know, keep it simple because from a consumer standpoint, it's important for you to guide them through the process, right? When someone gets to your website, it needs to be very, very simple throughout the process. And, and you probably heard me say simple so many times now, and it is, it's done on purpose because if you try to overcomplicate things, it, it end up doing more harm than good. So this is a good example of phase two. And then this is where you are PhD now, right? So you're trying to develop personas, right? Where you are using learnings from phase one and phase two, and this is the, the, the ultimate goal where you're trying to get more to a one-to-one -one sort of personalization experience. So what you were saying, I know you are interested in this device or this device because you spent a lot of time looking at this or maybe you were researching on another website. Um, this is really where you know, you're trying to get to. But it's not easy. So you have to build some learnings from the, the first two steps in order to really develop the personas of the customer that you're trying to, you're trying to, you're trying to hit. So, you know, this is a, an example of a Verizon wireless personas, right? So a customer who are close to deactivation. So they're showing on-site behavior that, you know, makes the things that they, they're, they're closing to the deactivating. So you're using a combination of your first party data segments, so you're using maybe to call the call center, for example, right? They had maybe four or five engagement with the call center. And then you're also using your third party data segment. So Blue Kai, for example, where you're trying to understand who they are. 
So are they someone who's, you know, from a high income perspective? Um, they're, they're a techie, for example. So really creating custom personas for certain groups of individuals. So now that I've spoken about, you know, phase one, where you start simple, phase two, where you're looking at key marketing channels, and phase three, where you're creating separate personas for more of a one-to-one -one targeting. So I'm going to show you in the next couple of slides, how do you actually implement that? So this example here, the challenge we wanted consumers to actually transact online. We wanted to push online transaction for a certain channel uh, versus offline. So for example, if you're searching on Verizon Wireless Store and you're going to the store located, we wanted to re-emphasize the value proposition of why you should buy online. Very simple test. Um, and we believe if we did that, it's going to drive conversions. So what we did, we added a banner to the store locator page that said, you know, you get an online exclusive, exclusive free phone. So we added that banner thinking if, if we put in this experience, it's going to drive, it's going to re-emphasize re the online behavior that if you, if you purchase right now, you can get the phone tomorrow or you can get a free phone tomorrow. The second phase, we added free next day shipping, right? So nothing too complicated here to that experience. And we, we saw some, some wins here as well. You know, if you're searching for a Verizon wireless store and you get to the store locator page regarding your, your location, we're adding free next day shipping. Because we found some of the reason why people go to the store because you want to fill the phone, you want to test the features, and so forth and so on. Or you might, you, you just don't have the time to wait. And this enabled us to, to see how that behavior changed. And then the third phase, we got real complicated. So this is where we have our PhD from the first two phases. So we updated the banner. We added in free shipping. We added in time of day parting. So if it's 4 o'clock, we can say, I don't know, next day shipping or overnight shipping. And then we also put in a geolocation component to that. So it was freezing in certain areas. And we said, stay off the road. If you order the phone right now, you would get it tomorrow. So you don't have to drive in this weather. Simple test, but still a little bit complicated. But we learned from phase one and phase two that if we combine these different variants, it will drive the results that we're interested in. And that's what Monetay enabled us to do to be agile, right? To be able to make decisions on the fly. Not every time you want to make changes to a landing page, you have to go to IT. Uh, and it enabled us, if it's snowing, we can put a banner like this on a web page and say, don't go to the store. If you buy right now, you'll get it tomorrow. Or a matter of fact, you might get it today. I don't know, we're, we're still thinking about that, but I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so some of the things I just want you to, to sort of keep in mind is that personalization, it, it can't be difficult, but at the same time, it's very simple. If you, if you understand your customer and what they're looking for, and in understanding your customer, you have to form the right partnership. Use the tools at your disposal. Partner with your agencies, monetate, and remember to focus on core personas, so your core customers, right? So if you start with the core of your base and you build some early wins, it gives you confidence. It also enables you to sell it, right? So you can get additional resources, so you can do more of it. And always start simple. Don't overcomplicate things. I always start simple. You saw that we started with new and returning visitors. We started with desktop and mobile. And then we looked at the marketing channel. We looked at affiliate, pay search, understanding the behavior from the different marketing channels. And you always have to let your data make the decision. Intuitions are fantastic. 
Sometimes it's right, half the time it's wrong, but you have to let the data speak because it's a lot of data. I hate the word big data, but it's a lot of data. And you have to unclutter that data. I just want to say thank you to the folks that monetate. Thank you to the Verizon Wireless folks for allowing me to share some of their results here. And uh, I submit. Thank you.